This box gets almost everything right. It's super quiet and reasonably priced with good performance, but it does feature one common mistake. So let's see what the tricky green G3 is all about. It's smaller than your average mini and comes in a plain plastic black box, which doesn't offend and doesn't feel cheap. So that's a good start. In the package, you'll find a very short HDMI cable, which is handy to go with the included monitor mount and screws. You'll also get a longer HDMI cable if using it on your desk. The ports on the green G3 are pretty straightforward. On the front, two USB 3 and an audio jack. On the back, dual USB 3, gigabit LAN and dual HDMI. An SD card reader is missing and would have been a nice addition. Inside the tricky green G3 is Intel's Celeron N5100, a capable quad-core CPU for everyday desktop and office use, media playback, and retro gaming. There are two configurations available, one with a 128GB M.2 SATA SSD, and the other with 256GB. Both variants come with 8GB of RAM running at 2666MHz. Once unscrewed, you'll need to use something to pop open the lid. So we've got the M.2 SATA SSD, and here we have the common mistake. This Mini only has a single DDR4 stick, which unfortunately reduces graphics performance. Ideally, soldered on dual channel RAM would have been the way to go. The included BIOS has a bunch of options, but for a locked CPU, there's nothing too interesting. This Mini comes with Windows 11 Pro pre-installed, but I tried Ubuntu, and my brief test was all good. And the same with Chrome OS Flex. No issues with audio or Wi-Fi. In Windows, 4K video playback using VLC didn't drop any frames. 4K 60fps YouTube dropped 31 frames, which isn't bad. 1440p 60fps was 29 dropped frames. And 1080p 60fps was just 9. So, it's a pretty good media player. Let's check out how it performs against some other actively cooled mini PCs. I've chosen the cheaper JK01, the similar configured ZX01, and the more expensive NUC11 Essential. All minis I've already reviewed. The JK01 and NUC11 Essential are barebones mini PCs, requiring you to add your own memory, storage, and OS. For single core, the green G3 N5100 is clearly the slowest of this lot, trailing the JK01 by around 2.5%, but that's not a big deal. For multi-core, it beats the JK01 by over 7%, and overall gets second place. Putting it in a real world test of encoding a video, and the green G3 was in second place once again. Only 9.5% behind the NUC11 Essential. Nice! Graphics wise, the N5100 in the green G3 takes third place in DX11 and DX12. It trails the ZX01 by 10% at worst. The SSD benchmark shows that the included 256GB SSD is a decent performer for both reads and writes. Alright, let's see how the N5100 handles some emulation, starting with Dreamcast games. Dynamite Cop is pretty close to 60fps, but not quite there. Virtua Fighter 3TB is in the lower 50s. Daytona USA drops a frame every now and then, but otherwise, it's pretty good. The PlayStation Portable, you should be able to emulate the majority of the library without issue. Sometimes you'll need to drop the output resolution, like with God of War. Or if you decide to enable 60fps mode in games like Motorstorm Arctic Edge. Nintendo GameCube emulation is a bit worse, but you'll still get to play a decent chunk of the library. Need for Speed Most Wanted runs too slow for my liking, but Metroid Prime was okay with frame drops here and there.
and you should get a locked 60 FPS for Mario Kart Double Dash. I also tried PS2 emulation, but Tekken Tag, which is one of the lighter 3D games, didn't even run full speed at native resolution. So I'd say PlayStation 2 emulation is a no-go. Power draw is nothing unexpected. Idle uses a bit more than some of the others I've seen, but Max is about right. Anyway, compared to a desktop PC, the power draw is peanuts. Max temperature was 81C, which is pretty good for what I put these minis through. Especially with such low fan noise. Oh, and the CPU didn't report any thermal throttling. But yes, the best thing is how quiet this mini PC is. Practically silent at idle. And here's load. So, overall, I'm happy with this box. The Trigkey Green G3 is a solid performer for the dollars. Build quality is good and I didn't run into any issues during my testing. Graphics performance could be even better with dual channel memory, but it's still a solid entry level mini PC. That's all for this one. Subscribe for even more budget mini PC reviews in the future. Cheers.